tonight I'm going to be working in acrylics. I'm going to be painting a nice summer sunset and some palm trees in acrylics. This is gonna be super easy, so if you are new to acrylics, definitely gonna be fun for you. I am working on a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. Just for transparency, Fredericks did provide me with the canvas to use in this video. Fredericks I've been using for years. They're the only canvas company that I have used since Gosh, maybe 2013 or so, 2012. I don't remember, it's been a long time because I had so many problems with other canvases. So I ended up swearing all of that off, switched to Fredericks, and then shortly after, they became a sponsor. This is a watercolor canvas board. And you may be thinking watercolor, acrylics, why? I've actually never even used it for watercolor. I use it for acrylics. It's super smooth. And if you're going with a canvas board, so you can see they're smooth or flat like that. Very, very smooth. So getting smooth blending for getting fine detail, that is going to make my life a lot easier. First thing I'm gonna do is just get a base layer of a really pretty lavender type purple color. So I'll use one of the bigger brushes. This one is a number 12 Filbert, this is the master's touch. So it's your generic Hobby Lobby brand. Now I don't like generic mat art materials. I think you do get what you pay for, except with paint brushes. I'm fine with the generic paint brushes. I'm just not that picky. So that is what I'm using there. So I'm just going to do a coat, one solid layer of this purple so that I'm not fighting the white of the canvas as I layer the rest of my colors in. So we'll do this layer let it dry and then go over. And this is a, I think deep violet light or something like that. I don't know, I'm making up names. It's a lavendery type purple, it doesn't even matter. You don't have to use the same brand of paint that I'm using, you don't have to use the same colors I'm using. Just whatever colors you think are pretty, go with that. Now mine is more color saturated. Mine is definitely a more rich kind of lavendery purple color. Now, if I have streaks, it's not the end of the world. I just wanna make sure those streaks are horizontal. That way, they just kind of look like clouds. Work it into your art if you're going to have streaks. So, like if I had diagonal streaks, they're not gonna make any sense. So, this way, we are all good. Now, one of the things that's really annoying when you're painting is just fighting that white of the canvas, and I'm avoiding that by getting this base layer on there first. And I am thinning the paint with water, Actually, this here is closer what you're seeing on the camera with my palette. That is a much closer representation of the color that I'm using. So let's go ahead and just fill the rest of that in really quick. And I'm gonna soften out a lot of those brush strokes with a mop brush. Oh, I don't, oh, I do have some ready, okay. So I'll get as much out as I can with my regular brush and then I'm gonna switch over to the mop brush. And I'm just gonna lightly go over that to get rid of brush strokes. And I'm gonna adjust my contrast and values and everything on the camera in just a moment after we get this drying. So when you clean your mop brush, you want to just dip the very tip of the bristles. So you can see there's just a little bit of paint right in here. I don't need to get the entire thing wet because it's go like there's no reason to do that there's no paint down there. Just get the tip of the bristles wet to rinse it off. So, and then I'm gonna rub it in circles on a paper towel until it's dry, as you can see there. But you wanna just rinse the tip of those bristles because you want it dry and ready to go as soon as possible. And if you get the entire thing wet, it's not going to be, it's gonna be a little much. Let me dry this first. Now you wanna make sure this is 100% dry. Just a little, I can definitely see the shiny spots. It's definitely a little bit tacky if I touch it. It's not dry enough if I were to go over this while it was still like this level of dry. So it's dry enough I can touch it. But if I went over it with paint right now, cause it's not completely dry, that layer would lift up. So now that we've got this base, I'm gonna go ahead and start down here where I'm not gonna worry about the water yet, but I'm gonna start where the sky is. So right about here with the oranges and start bringing in white. And I'm gonna start with some white to go over, we'll do white and yellow first. Now I can darken this up, this is gonna be way too light. Actually, let's pull a little bit of red so it's more orange. But I can go back over and glaze to darken it up. But I wanna get the line, will probably be right. I would rather come down too low than not go down low enough. I can always pull the water back up over as I need to. 
So I'm just gonna pull this on there and I'm gonna use my handy fine mist sprayer. Link is in the video description. This is what you wanna use. If you want to wet the canvas or you wanna keep your paint wet, either use an airbrush or use these fine mist sprayers. I've got a link in the video description. They're fairly inexpensive and they will give you a very fine mist. This is not as fine of a mist or like as perfect as a airbrush, but it's a lot more convenient, more practical. So I find myself now, even though my airbrush is right here, I end up reaching for this more than the airbrush when it comes to getting these layers. So I'm gonna go a little bit light and then I'm gonna start pulling in these darker areas. Actually, I'm gonna wipe that paint off the brush first. Let's start getting some of the pinks in and some white mixed in with that. I'm gonna need a lot more white. And you can do as many layers as you like. If you're not getting the perfect blend exactly how you want, do another layer. I'm gonna miss that again because it's starting to dry. Here and there. One of these brushes started to shed a little. So we have this fading out to this pinkish peach color. I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm gonna go with more of the violet. I'm adding a little bit of deep violet into that. But I want that to mix in with my white. See how I'm keeping it side to side? So if I have streaks, it just looks like bits of clouds in the sky. So it's totally fine. Now I want this to start fading up into that deeper violet. Now remember, we're gonna be doing a silhouette of palm trees. That means black. Also, I'm gonna lightly go over this while that's still wet. But that means black. If this is not dark or light enough, the black is just not gonna show up. So we wanna make sure that's a little, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter there on mine so that those palm trees really show up nicely. And then I'm gonna get a little bit darker as I keep moving my way up. So I've mixed a little bit of deep violet in there. I'm gonna pull all the way so that it's all nice and wet and it'll blend nice and smooth. Looks a little bit lighter again on camera than it does in person. We're gonna go right on over these, get rid of those brush strokes. And if you're worried that yours is not smooth enough, don't, you're gonna be covering most of this with a palm tree anyway, so it does not need to be perfect. I'm gonna dry this and then I'm gonna come down here and work on the oranges. I don't wanna do it now because that's all wet and it's, it's just not gonna come out as orange as what I want. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna rinse this so it's ready to go, the mop brush. And I always have multiple mop brushes ready to go because if one of them does get too wet or if let's say I'm working and it built up too much paint on this brush, I don't have time to clean it and dry it and still keep blending. So I always want another mop brush. And these are really just blush brushes or powder brushes for makeup. They don't shed as much as make uh, painting like art supply brushes, but I always want multiples of those ready to go. Okay, let's dry this. Huge, if you guys could do me a huge, huge favor, and this, every artist that you follow on YouTube, we all need this help right now. YouTube doesn't share our content anymore. I used to average 4,000 new subscribers a month. You know how many I get now? 300. This last 30, 28 days, 300. That's not sustainable. If I can't find and can't reach new people to teach, like, I can't grow, I can't, Patreon's not, Patreon is directly related to how many new people find me on YouTube. And I can't like, the low cost Patreon lessons are because I can find so many people through YouTube. We can't find them anymore because YouTube is not pushing our content to people. Lessons like art lesson, art tutorial style, things like what I do, they do not rank well anymore on YouTube. Um, drama stuff, like vlogging, that sort of thing will rank, but it's like, that's not what I do, I teach. So if you could please, and all of us, it's not just me, we all need help because YouTube YouTube search function sucks now. Like you can do a search for an art lesson, a specific like oil painting art lesson, and the chances of you finding what you are looking for are very, very low. They'll show you like six and then they start showing of what you search for. And the rest are, well, here's something related. Here's suggested, here's this, but not like you used to be able to just scroll through page after page after page of lessons and find what you wanted to do. You can't do it anymore. We need your help. The only way that we are going to artists who are doing tutorials are gonna be able to succeed is if you as viewers share on Facebook 
Facebook, share on, I know I hate Facebook, but share on MeWe, share on Instagram. Anywhere that you are, if you can just let people know, share our videos. If there was a lesson you liked, share it in a group, share it in a Facebook art group. Um, Facebook, and you would think, well, why don't you share it? Because if I share my own content, Facebook will restricted even further than they already do. They, that's actually one of their rules. Like if I, on my page, post my video and then I share it, gets seen even less. Like it is a disaster, like Facebook's bad. But if you share it, I've got a much better chance of reaching more people who would like to follow these lessons. So it will, like they're all, everything's just tied together and we need all of the artists here who do tutorials need your help. The more you can share the way that, that YouTube's algorithm is going, it is very, very hard to find new people unless you're creating that more drama, more entertainment style content, which is not what I do, I teach. So yes, I need your help. We all need your help. So now it's time to start pulling in these orange colors. So I'm actually using orange Liquitex. Now the orange with Liquitex Basics is extremely translucent. Like it is not a highly pigmented color, but I love it for glazing because it is so translucent. Well, too orange there, I'm gonna add some deep violet to it. But it's so translucent that it's wonderful for glazing. So even though, like if I wanted something, let's say I'm painting an orange flower and I want it really orange, I'm gonna mix it with yellow and red. But if I am looking for just tinting the color like I'm doing here, I really like it for glazes. So that's why I still buy it, even though like if I'm looking for orange, orange, normally I mix my own. I'm just gonna lightly go over that. Now I'm going to start pulling a little bit of white right in here where we're gonna put that brighter sun. And we've got a little bit of clouds, so we can just kind of put some poofs in there. I'm not really gonna blend those out. I want them to look like clouds. Remember, our palm trees are going to cover most of this. And then I'll brighten up where the yellow is going to go in just a moment here. Now, if it's a little bit rough, I'm just gonna take my brush right around the edge, soften that up so it pulls out. And I can layer this to get it brighter and brighter as I go. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time through. I'm gonna take a separate brush, dip it in water, and I'm just gonna smudge that out just a bit. If you have too much water for the smudging brush, it will work as an eraser, so be careful. You don't want too much. So what I'm doing here is wet into wet blending. I'm blending wet paint into wet paint. And that's what's giving me that super soft look. Now I'm just blending the edges. That's the other thing. Notice as I do this, I am focusing more on just kind of dabbing those edges. What you don't wanna do is take this to blend and start stirring and mixing circles right in the whole area you're blending. Because what'll happen is you'll end up with an outer heavy ring. And if you have done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This hat ring, it's like empty in the center, but the ring around the edge and it just, it's not cute. It's because you just want the outer edge. Just dab just a little bit. That's all I need to do. Okay, while I'm just gonna leave that because I do need to make this brighter, but I'm gonna let it air dry. So in the meantime, what I am going to do is start putting in the waterline. Now, one of the things, if you look at this reference photo, this is one I found on Pixabay, the waterline is slightly at an angle because that's how the photographer took it. Fine for using as a reference photo, do not paint it that way. It needs to be the same. It needs to be even all the way across. If you paint your waterline so it's like slightly like this, nope, it looks, it's, ter it's bad. It's not creative, it's not artsy, it's just bad. So we don't wanna do that. What I like to do is decide where I want my line. We'll use my, the back of my Fredericks. Let's rip this. Let's say I want it to be about right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here so I know that is the point. And I'm just gonna make a little mark. Usually I would use a little pencil, but <laughs> I don't want, my canvas is wet, so we're gonna, I, I'm using alternative techniques today. Let's just take a little line here. And I'm going to line that up with the bottom of the canvas. And I'm just gonna put my line where the water is going to go here here and here. That way I can go ahead and connect those lines. Now, what I can do, normally I would put a piece of tape, but again, it's wet, can't do that right now. So one of the things that I can do, 
just so I get a nice straight or at least straight-ish line. As so I can just hold that right on over, line up my little lines. There we go. Now I've got a relatively straight line, not there, so now right there, that's where one of my little mountains is going to go. And I can go ahead and just come down there now. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, because, like we want it straight, but it doesn't have to like right here, no big deal where I it got under the paper because I'm gonna be putting mountains in there. So that I'll just put a mountain in there. When something like that happens in your painting, don't freak out or worry, just work it into it. Like, it's well, Technically, if it was dry, I could just wipe it off. It's not, so I've got a few different rules tonight on how I'm doing this. Okay, I'm gonna grab, let's see, some white. We'll grab some of the pink we used earlier, the peach, get a little bit of everything in there. And I just wanna let it go side to side. I'm not gonna make all the tiny, tiny ripples that are in the reference photo, but I do wanna get the general lights and darks and get some of that transition of color. some more white and some yellow. Now, luckily, all the colors I'm using today, they work really well together. So if you smudge too much orange with too much purple, it doesn't matter, they work. You're not gonna create an ugly, muddy mess. It works really well. Whereas let's say I was using a lot of blue in the sky along with these colors, that now makes it more challenging because the blue can certainly make things look very not cute if you don't quite get it right. I'm not saying don't ever use blue in combination, I'm just saying it's a little bit more of a challenge, whereas these colors, if they mix in a way you weren't totally intending, they're all gonna work fine. So that is with any of these purples, oranges, yellows, magenta. Let's get some more of the white. Actually, I'm gonna wipe some of the brush. I've got a lot of paint on there, so it's a little bit too, actually, let's grab a clean brush. So this brush here, this is kind of, you can see it's a little bit fluffy, a little bit frayed. I wanna grab a brush that is in better condition. See how the bristles are like flatter? This is a brush I haven't used as much because I'm at as much chance to ruin it. Let's go ahead and reload that for my brighter highlights. Now, if this, start, if this is too wet, it won't get white enough and I would just let it dry and come back, but nope, we're good. And I'm just gonna do these little lines. We get wider and wider as we move our way forward. This is where the sun is going to be reflecting. And I'm just making side to side streaks. I don't want just straight lines. See how it's a bunch of little ones? So it starts looking more like ripples in the water. And I'm gonna move my way back. Make it smaller, thinner and thinner as it moves back. And I will end up pulling yellow around the edges once this dries. But like I said, I'm kind of afraid to use the hair dryer tonight because I don't need this live stream starting over twice. So we're just gonna have to deal with letting it air dry and kind of skip around a little more than I no might normally. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and lighten this up. I'm gonna take this brush, it's a little bit damp. Oh, no, it's almost dry. Let's make it a little damp and just smudge those edges out. It's a little bit too wet. I can tell because they're gonna, it's spreading too much. Let's dry a little off. Then I'll be putting white or yellow over that when it dries. Why not just use yellow now? Because if I just did yellow without the white, it's not gonna be as bold or bright. Yellow is so translucent. So by putting white, when I put the yellow over it, it will glow. It'll stand, it'll just be in your face yellow. Someone should really let me name the colors. In your face yellow. I think I'd be good at it. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead now and get my hint of now, the reference photo has more of the purple down here. I am really liking my orange. I'm gonna leave my more like on fire orange. I think is gorgeous and I think I like it better. So mine will be a little different than the reference photo. And this looks super like too much purple to just open. We're gonna cover that with palm trees. I'm gonna get a few little guys in here and same thing. I'm just gonna soften that out. I wanna lighten that up. 
a bit more. I love these lavender, like magentas, purples, and oranges together. It always looks so pretty. And I can glaze a little bit more peach or orange over this when it dries if it needs it. I don't know that it will though. I'm really liking how it is. Just a few side to side highlights and then I'm gonna smudge that out. And when you smudge things out, don't over blend. If you keep reworking it, you're gonna end up with a hot mess. It, it's just, you don't, you end up with one medium color instead of your definite lights and darks. I want both in there. Okay, let's get some of those. Wipe the paint off the brush first. Now I'm going to just use, I'm gonna mix a lot of orange, some white. I just wanted a few shades darker than what my background color is here. Now in the reference photo, it's got more of the purple, but because I'm not putting that much of the purple down into the orange, I wanna pull orange into mine. This may not be the right color. Nope, I need to go darker than that. So let's actually pull some red into it and a little bit of magenta. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, that looks like it might work. Let's go a little bit darker still. Adding a little bit of yellow into that. Okay, I'm just gonna get the hint of some mountains in the background. But the reason that I'm not just going straight with the purples is because that's, I just want a little bit darker than what my sky is. We wanna make it look like it's just fading into that background. And then the same thing here. Just very subtle. I can go a little bit darker. I'm gonna pull a little bit more purple around the edge. And I'm not trying to copy the mountain scene exactly. Now, if you were doing a specific location, you knew this place, you went on vacation, you saw it, then you're gonna copy your mountains exactly. But in something like this, I have no idea where this is. I'm just making a cute, pretty beach scene. Darken that edge as well. Just let that kind of fade into the water. Soften that edge with the waterline. So I'm just working that brush right back and forth between that orangish purpley mountain and the water. Now mine may look a little bit lopsided just because of the angle that the camera is, but it is straight. So we're gonna let that dry. I definitely mm, needs to dry a little bit more before I get into the yellows. Now, if you look at the reference photo, you can definitely see the lightness, like the hint of grass and such in the, we're not, I'm not doing that. Mine's just gonna be a silhouette. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that black now. Or black, I can lighten it up a little bit with some oranges and purples. It doesn't need to be straight black, but I'm not gonna be putting that level of detail into this. It doesn't need it for the look I'm going for. So we've got some of that purple. I'll even pull some red and orange. I just am making kind of a muddy color so it's not just flat black yet. The edge is more, looks like it's a little grassy cliff between here and the water that it's overlooking. Now this line does not need to be perfectly straight. That's different. This is just kind of a cliff or, or ledge that's overlooking the water. But that line back here, this is the one you want to make sure it's even and not lopsided. This here is a little bit different. And I've had people ask why I don't just tape this board down so it doesn't move. I have, and the problem is that sometimes the tape will rip the back paper that's on here, and I hate how that looks. So, I mean, an alternative would be to put a piece of paper paper, like, um, butcher's paper or something like that, you could use that and cover the back or just a piece of white art paper and recover it. So, I mean, that is an option, but that is a lot of extra work I don't wanna do. So, I just deal with it moving around. I don't like, that's one of the reasons I don't like canvas boards like this for, um, for oil painting because it's wet. Like here, this is mostly dry, I can touch it safely. Oops, I'm off camera. I'm gonna take a stiff brush just so it looks kind of grassy. I'm gonna go around the edges there. This brush may not end up being stiff enough. We'll see, I may have to switch. Oops, I got white in there. That'll work. So I just want it to look kind of grassy, bushes, little hint of that here. So my edge isn't too perfectly smooth. A 
This is not the best brush. It's a little too soft, so it's not giving me the pokey look that I want. If you damage your brushes, never throw them away because a damaged brush, a more damaged brush would work way better for what I'm doing here. It would go faster. It's not that the end result would necessarily be a bit better, it would just be faster. Like right now I'm having to rework that a few times just to get that softer edge because it is too bendy, too soft, too not damaged. Does that try enough? I think I can probably lightly glaze if I'm careful. Worst case scenario, it lifts, I put white, I let it dry, I do it again. So I'm just gonna take some of my yellow and I thin that out with water, of course, like always. I'm gonna go right around my edges. Oh, that's perfect. Let's really get that glow. I'm gonna go over all of this and just pull white back in the very brightest portions. And then the white or the yellow here, we're just gonna go right on the edges. I'm gonna pull that into the purple as well. And it just gives it that beautiful, like on fire glow. Okay. Tea, I need tea. What do you guys drink when you paint? Let me know. So I'm gonna brighten up my white a little bit more and then we get to start the palm trees, which is my favorite part. Well, I don't know, the sunset part's pretty fun. A little bit more in here to brighten up and that's it. So sky is done. Oh, I love how this is coming out. Now palm trees. So the first thing that I do with palm trees, I'm just going to paint in where I want their trunks to be. And those of you who are iced tea, you do sugar, honey, nothing. Mine is, has nothing in it. It's just, it, but it's flavored. Mine is black sage, wait, blackberry sage iced tea. So good, but no sugar or anything. And it is amazing. Okay. So what I want to do is just kind of figure out Maybe a palm tree starts here and it ends down here. And then I, so I've got my two dots and now all I have to do is connect them. I'm gonna push harder with that brush as I go down and it makes the trunk larger. The more pressure you add to your brush, the thicker your line is. So see, I didn't even have to turn the brush. I didn't have to do anything other than don't push as hard. And as I move down, push harder and harder and that thickens up that line. And of course I'm thinning my black paint. This is Mars black and I am thinning it with a bit of water. I want one here is gonna be shorter. So here, and you're gonna end here. Same thing, don't push as hard. Harder, harder, and then there you go. This one actually goes off the page. We'll pull you down further. And I'm just gonna smudge this so it kind of fades out into that lighter background. Since it's sort of a silhouette, but not totally. And let's go here. We've got one that is going to be here and it comes up to, we'll say about here, to here. I'm gonna reload that brush so I've got lots of paint on there. Not a lot of pressure, adding more as I move down. And I don't need this perfectly straight. Palm trees are not, like they, they're bendy. Okay, we've got another one that's gonna come here to maybe here. There's three that come out of this section. One's way off, gonna go off camera, off camera, off screen there, and then a small one here. So let's go ahead and connect those now. Let's see, I'm doing connect the dot. I don't need to sit and draw out this perfectly shaped tree, but if I just do random lines, chances are they're not gonna be in the right place. By dotting where I want it, now I just have to connect the lines. Add more and more pressure. That tree's got a lump. Same thing. There's a chunk of paint I need to pick out there. Stop helping it out. Out, out, good enough. Now, one thing I do wanna show you too, look at my palette, see how much paint I have out? It's way too much paint. The reason that I have such thick chunks of paint out is half of it was old paint and I have, just haven't peeled it up. Less than half of what I have out is what I need. We have a tendency 
and this is an example of putting way too much paint on our palette. It doesn't take that much. I'm gonna use more for my base layers, but I mean all the yellow, the orange, I have way too much paint out. So save your money, save your paint. Don't put quite that much out on your palette. And then this one just kind of disappears here. It's a little closer on the reference photo, but mine's out a little bit. And those are the trees I'm going to add. Actually, you, and I've got a little guy back here. He's just a little one, so I'm not gonna bother with the dots. Okay, next, I am going to switch to a round brush and now I'm gonna paint in just the line. So I'm basically doing stick figures right now. Keep it easy. I'm gonna do the lines of where these are going to connect. So now I'm just gonna make my little palm fronds stick out from there. This is gonna look terrible right now, that's fine. But notice that they're different size, they've gotta go different angles, some have to come down. Get, get some variation, make sure that some of these are overlapping. Aw, that looks really sad. We'll make him happy, don't worry. Make sure when I look at my reference photo, some of these are overlapping behind that trunk. So we'll get a few of them long enough to do that. Palm trees are one of my favorite things to paint because they're so easy to make look really good. I mean, not now, this doesn't look good, but it will, I promise. This guy's really poofy. Some of these just go straight up. And I can always add more if I need later. I'm just gonna do that on all of these guys now. You see how they have to overlap. That is so important on this painting. Now, if you look at the reference photo, it does get a little bit fancier where you've got more of a glow with the orange on the trunk. I'm not doing that. We're going to keep this one is just simple, simple silhouette. But you can get crazy if you really look closely. If you zoom in, you can see hints of orange from the sunset hitting the trees. So that is certainly something that you can do if you want to spend a bit more time on yours. And this definitely, a lot of this tree goes right off the, the canvas. This whole area gets really dark. That one actually would go to that tree. See how some of these have to go down towards the trunk. Make sure you're getting those. We, it looks like we've got some that are coming off the, the canvas from this side. So we'll just get a few hanging down there. Okay, so there is our really absolutely horrendous looking, but correct, palm trees. Now is when we make them look good. You've got two options. You can use a liner brush. I'm gonna show you both ways that I would do this, or the way that I'm gonna do most of this is with a rake brush. So what a rake brush is, if you're not familiar with it, it looks like, the, in this case, and I prefer the tack lumber saw, I almost never want flat rake brushes, they're just too unnatural looking. So it's slightly rounded, but what I have here is essentially a brush. So here's like your normal tack lumber bristle brush, there's your, your rake brush. It's just, the, there's like splits in between there. So one brush stroke, I get a whole lot of little lines. Now the, the liner brush certainly gives me more control. Rake brush goes so fast. So we'll, I'll show you with both methods. So if you don't have the rake brush, we'll start with the liner. And this still doesn't even take that long with the liner, but you would just come from the inside, just pick one of your, any one, let's say this one, and just come down and curve. Don't make straight lines. If these are too straight, they don't look very good. I'm gonna do a very slight curve. And I push harder here as I'm in the inside, lighten it up as I pull away from that center. 
And then this guy actually has some where you see on the other side as well. Nope. Now, if your canvas, it starts getting kind of bumpy where, like I was seeing here, I need to add more paint and more water to my brush. Oh, maybe a little bit too much there. There we go. So there is the method with just using a liner brush. Oh, this is a pretty one. This is another one that I could see on my own wall. Of course, I'm obsessed, obs what? English, obsessed with all things ocean. So there's that. So with your, when you load your rake brush, this is very similar to loading a liner brush. It's basically just a lot of little liner brushes. I have to thin that with a decent amount of water. If I don't have enough water or if I have too much, it's just not gonna work well. So I'm thinning that with water. I'll end up wiping some of that off and I'll test it on, I'll just test the bottom of my easel, that works. So now with that rake brush, I can create with really quickly a bunch of those little lines. And you can always come back with your, your liner brush, which I usually recommend, and add a few little individuals that you've controlled more. But you've got to find, and this is the challenge with the, the rake brush, you've got to find the right balance of how much water versus how much paint. And as I go, you see, I'll do a couple of brush brushes, and I quickly realize I don't have that balance right. It's not an issue of once you learn it, you're always going to have it perfect. You have to kind of test as you continue um, loading the brush. Every time, maybe a little bit off. And I mostly pick one side and pull it down, but occasionally a little bit off the other end, just so you get some variation in angle so that they're not all flat. Don't overdo this. I would rather you do not enough and have to go back and add more than make it too solid dark black and not have enough of your sky show through. We need these bits of sky showing through there. And if you overload that brush like I just did, see, too solid, I need to wipe some off. And then we're just gonna continue that around the others. Just a lot of reloading. I dip the brush in the water, then thin the paint again. And this one is a half inch silver uh, ruby satin. I don't know, I got it on Amazon. I'm not sure if I have the link to this one in the description. If not, I'll add it later. So this one, I'm gonna have coming out from both sides. I don't like how poof just that one is. So I'm gonna add another over here. There we go, that looks better. So you can always add more if you need to. And you can really see now why I needed the background to be a little bit lighter because if I went too dark, you're just not gonna see these palm fronds. What I would have to do if I went too dark, it, like if my background was really dark, I would have more of the highlights from the sunset reflecting on the palm trees to make them stand out more. So it's not that that can't work, it just adds another step or another element that you would want to include. This is another one. I don't like how it's straight up. So let's just add a little guy back over here. Although most of that's gonna get covered when this one comes in. So I guess it doesn't really matter. And 
You can see I'm jumping around too. It doesn't even matter. Like normally I tell you focus on one little area. You just pick a, a, a stem that you put on there and add the leaves. Those are not the right terms for a palm frond, but whatever. And this whole area is just a very dark kind of kind of blob with hints of purple showing through. So just make sure you don't cover all the purple. And this painting was one that you guys had requested. So if you have more requests, I've been writing those down or keeping those uh, for future live streams. Next week is going to be a seahorse in watercolor. So this one's coming the opposite direction. It might be watercolor pencils. We'll see. And see, as I fill this in, you don't see a lot. I mean, there's a lot of globs of black, but you need a lot of the purple showing through too. Don't just make it one solid glob. That looks good. This guy over here needs a little bit more. That looks better. There we go. That is it. Now I need to sign it. You can see very, very, I'm not, oh, good question. Rob asked, how much pressure am I putting on this brush? Not much. You use it just like you would a liner brush. You don't push very hard with a liner brush. We want to get those thin lines. Now, this one brush, if you push harder, it just turns it into a regular old filbert brush, not a rake brush. For it to, to like activate the rake brush features of it, very light hand. I am not pushing hard at all. This guy is ready to go. If anyone wants, I love how this came out. Oh my gosh, this looks good. So let me show you the color of that. You can see a little bit better in this lighting. It's very accurate. Oh, I love how this came out. I'm super excited.